Back to the Future, Back to the Future and the Isra and Mirage. In 2009, the British physicist Stephen Hawking held a party for time travelers. The twist was he sent out the invites a year later. But miserably no guests showed up. Travel into the past is probably impossible. Even if it were possible, Hawking and others have argued that you could never travel back before the moment your time machine was built. But travel to the future? That's a different story. Of course, we are all time travelers. As we are swept along in the current time. From past to future, at a rate of one hour per hour. But, as with a river, the current flows at different speeds in different places. Science, as we know, allows for several methods to take the fast track into the future. Here's a rundown. Time and Einstein. Between 1905 and 1915, the German physicist Albert Einstein talked about the easiest and most practical way to get to the far future, which is speed, it's really going fast. According to his theory of special relativity, when you travel at speeds approaching the speed of light, time slows down for you relative to the outside world. This is not just a conjecture or thought experiment, it's been measured. Using twin atomic clocks, one flown in a jet aircraft, the other stationary on Earth, physicists have shown that a flying clock ticks slower because of its speed. In the case of the aircraft, the effect is minuscule. But if you were in a spaceship traveling at 90% of the speed of light, you'd experience time passing about 2.6 times slower than it was back on Earth. And the closer you get to the speed of light, the more extreme the time travel. The highest speeds achieved through any human technology are probably the protons whizzing around the Large Hadron Collider at 99.9999991% of the speed of light. Using special relativity, we can calculate one second for the proton is equivalent to 27,777,778 seconds, or about 11 months, for us. But, did Einstein stop at that point? Actually no, he talked about another way to go to the future by gravity. According to his theory of general relativity, the stronger the gravity you feel, the slower time moves. As you get closer to the center of the Earth, for example, the strength of gravity increases. Time runs slower for your feet than your head. Again, this effect has been measured. In 2010, physicists at the U.S. National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, placed two atomic clocks on shelves. One 33 centimeters above the other, and measured the difference in their rate of ticking. The lower one ticked slower because it feels a slightly stronger gravity. So, to travel to the far future, all we need is a region of extremely strong gravity, such as a black hole. The closer you get to the event horizon, the slower time moves. But it's risky business, cross the boundary, and you can never escape. But what if we use these two methods together with speed and gravity to go to the future? Has that happened? Actually, yes, and I know who is the first one who traveled by time with an amazingly high speed and gravity list from 1400 years ago before Einstein's theories or even any experiments. He is Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him in Isra and Mirage the miraculous night journey, the first time traveler in the world. This is a reference to the event known as Mirage, Ascension, and Isra, Night Journey. According to most traditions, and especially the authentic ones, this event took place one year before Hydra. Detailed reports about it are found in the works of Hadith and Sirah and have been narrated from as many as 25 companions. The most exhaustive reports are those from Anas Ibn Malik, Malik Ibn Sasa, and Abu Huraira. Some other details have been narrated by Umar, Ali, Abd Allah Ibn Masidi, Abd Allah Ibn Abbas, and Aisha among other companions of the Prophet. The Isra and Miraj refer to two parts of a miraculous journey that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, took in one night from Mecca to Jerusalem and then an ascension to the heavens. Isra is an Arabic word referring to Prophet Muhammad's miraculous night journey from Mecca to Jerusalem specifically. To the site of Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem as referred to in Surah Al-Isra in the Quran. It is believed to have been followed by Miraj, his ascension to heaven. According to some of the Hadith scholars this journey is believed to have taken place just over a year before Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, migrated from Mecca to Medina. Following is the translation of the first verse of chapter 17, Al-Isra, from the Quran that refers to this journey. Exalted is he who took his servant, I, Prophet Muhammad, by night from Al-Masjid Al-Arm to Al-Masjid al aq whose surroundings we have blessed, to show him of our signs. Indeed, he is the hearing, the seeing, Quran 17, colon 1. Allah, may he be glorified, is exalted from everything not appropriate for him. 
It is he who took his servant, Muhammad, peace be upon him, on the night journey from the sacred masjid, mosque, in Mecca, to the masjid of Jerusalem, whose surroundings I have blessed with fruit. Crops and dwellings of prophets, peace be upon them, for him to see some of our signs which show Allah's power and ability, may he be glorified. He is the one who hears everything, no sound escapes him, and the one who sees everything, nothing is hidden from him, and the one who sees from whom nothing seen is hidden. Al-Isra, 1. A Journey to Heavens The Quran here only mentions that the Prophet, peace be upon him, was taken from the Kaaba to the mosque in Jerusalem. It also specifies that the purpose of the journey was such that Almighty God Allah might show him some of his signs. Beyond this, the Quran does not cover many details. However, according to Hadith reports, Gabriel took the Prophet at night from the Kaaba to the mosque in Jerusalem on a burak. Burak was the name of the heavenly steed on which the Prophet rode on his nocturnal journey from Mecca to Jerusalem and then to the heavens for this nocturnal journey QV Miraj. On reaching Jerusalem, the Prophet, peace be upon him, along with other prophets, peace be upon him, offered prayers. Gabriel then took him to the heavens, and the Prophet met several great prophets in different heavenly spheres. Finally, he reached the highest point in the heavens and was graced with an experience of the Divine Presence. On that occasion, the Prophet, peace be upon him, received several directives, including prayers that became obligatory five times a day. Thereafter, the Prophet, peace be upon him, returned from the heavens to Jerusalem and from there to the Holy Mosque in Mecca. Numerous reports on the subject reveal that the Prophet, peace be upon him, was also enabled on this occasion to observe heaven and hell. It may be recalled that according to authentic reports when the Prophet, peace be upon him, narrated the incidents of this extraordinary journey the following day to the people in Mecca. The unbelievers found the whole narration utterly amusing. Even the faith of some Muslims was shaken because of the highly extraordinary nature of the account. The details of the event provided by the Hadith supplement the Quranic account, which proves the honesty of the Prophet, peace be upon him. So, what was the nature of this journey? Did it take place when the Prophet, peace be upon him, was asleep or when he was awake? Did he undertake a journey in the physical sense or did he have a spiritual vision while remaining in his place? These questions, in our view, have been resolved by the text of the Quran itself. The opening statement, Holy is he who carried his servant by night from the holy mosque to the farther mosque. Verse 1 itself indicates that it was an extraordinary event which took place by dint of the infinite power of God. For more explanation, to be able to perceive the kind of things mentioned in connection with the event either in a dream or through intuition, is not so wondrous that it should be prefaced by the statement, Holy is he who carried his servant by night. A statement which amounts to proclaiming that God was free from every imperfection and flaw. Such a statement would make absolutely no sense if the purpose of it was merely to affirm that God had the power to enable man to have either vision in the course of a dream or to receive information. Intuitively. In our view, the words of the experience of a dream vision was an actual journey, and the observation in question was a visual observation. All was contingent upon God's will that truths be revealed to the Prophet in this fashion. Now, let us consider the matter carefully. The Quran tells us, in clear terms, that the Prophet, peace be upon him, went from Mecca to Jerusalem and then returned to Mecca during the night, obviously. Without the use of anything resembling an aircraft clearly broke the time constraint and traveled by time owing to God's power. And when it is clearly stated that it is God who did something out of his power. Any doubts about the possibility of these acts can be entertained only by those who do not believe God to be all-powerful. The question now popped up in our minds. Can we travel one day by time? MMM, actually the answer is clear and so simple. Yes, we will travel by time, but every one of us will travel in his time, which is an unknown time. Every one of us will travel by time, but not by body and soul, we will travel by time by our souls only, and our bodies will be buried.